Hi everyone, my name is Abhi Singh and welcome to Daily Data Structures. Today, we're going to be discussing the, abs the dictionary abstract data type, as well as implementing the dictionary ADT with one of my favorite uh, data structures called the hash table. However, before we begin discussing the hash table in all its glory, we need to understand what a dictionary is and then get the motivation for the hash table and why it's used. So let's get started. A dictionary is just a series of key value pairs. A dictionary is a series or a collection, whatever you will, of key value pairs. So, in the most conventional sense, let's take the Oxford Dictionary of English, what we think of when we think of dictionary. The Oxford Dictionary of English has definitions that match the corresponding words. Or in other words, no pun intended, you have a word being a key and its respective definition being the value. So let's say you have word and then you have its corresponding definition in the dictionary. This word ends up being the key and then the definition ends up being the value. So now that you understand that, let's take a little let's take a look at a, an example that's a bit more involved which should allow us to transition nicely into hash tables. So let's say that we have a set of two letter words and we have their definitions and we want to implement a dictionary. So in this case it would be the Oxford Dictionary of Two Letter Words. So, so right now we need to determine exactly how many words are we looking at, how many different combinations of two letter words are, exist. So obviously there are 26 letters in the, in the English uh, alphabet and then we, we're looking for two or combinations of two, all of the possible combinations of two letter words. So 26 times 26 ends up becoming 676 different words, letters, or two, uh, two letter words. So our dictionary, or our Oxford Dictionary of Two Letter Words, is 676 entries long. As a result, we need to initialize an array of length 676. To add a key value pair to the dictionary we need and determine the specific index that a specific word would go into, we need to take that key and then turn it into an integer that represents the index of the array that it goes in. Ergo, or to put it in fancier terms, we are getting the hash code of the key, which maps the key, which maps every two letter word to an integer in the range of zero to 675. Zero being like the very first element of the array. And 675 being the last element. So now that we understand this, we can start talking about uh, a, a specific example and start to picture what's exactly going on. So let's say we have the word AB. This is an imaginary two-letter word in the Oxford Dictionary of Two-Letter Words. Uh, what happens is you have AB a, is applied to some function that maps the two-letter word, let's make the error even longer, into some sort of integer. That's within the range zero to 675, right? And let's just say that this function is the following, f of uh, some string, which, take, which is, uh, the invariant is that it's two, it's two characters long. Uh, it would be 26, meaning the number of characters in the English language, times the first letter 
minus 1 plus the second letter minus 1. And f is this function here. And when I say f, when I say for letter minus 1, what I mean is um, a corresponds to 1, b corresponds to 2, c corresponds to 3, so on and so forth. Okay? So now we need to talk, now we need, using this function, we can take a, b and determine exactly what integer it lies in. So a, this ends up evaluate f of a, b, the string here, ends up becoming, oops, sorry, ends up becoming 26 times 0 plus uh, 2 minus 1 is 1, which ends up evaluating to 1. So that means AB and the key AB ends up in the first, uh, in, well, in the second index of the array, so or in index 1. So let's just say you have this array that goes on and this is the 675th uh, index, this is the 0th index. So then our AB would be here, AB with its corresponding value or its definition. We'll just call it definition for short, okay? And this is going in the first element of the array. And we can just keep inserting items, so on and so forth. However, let's say now that we want to store every single possible word. Well, this would mean we, as you know, we have an insane amount of words. In fact, the longest word is 45 characters long. So that means all of the different possible permutations of words that could exist ends up being 26 to the power of 45, which means we have a ton of wasted words because most of those words end up being nonsense, right? And that also means that we have to initialize an, air, an array of length 26 to the power 45, which is unimaginably large. So we need to think of a better way to do this. And this is the motivation behind doing using a hash table, because it solves this problem. Be so let's start, so before we can start thinking about the hash table, let's think about the problem we're having. We want to map, so let's, let me draw this out. Uh, so here's our problem. We want to map a large amount of data, like our, our words, to a reasonably sized array. So we don't want to initialize an array that's, so that's not of length 26 to the power 45. That'd be ridiculous, right? So how do we do this? How do we solve this problem? Well, at a higher level, we need to figure out, since we need to figure out a way to compress the array, we need to figure out a way to compress all of the entirety of the array and then add multiple items to one element of the array. Or in other words, we need to hash multiple keys to a specific bucket of the array. These are the ter I'm just trying to introduce you and get your feet wet in the terminology of hash tables. Well, a hash table does exactly what we're talking about in the in most intuitive sense. The hash table starts with a significantly smaller array, so not l of length 26 to the power 45, but it starts with something along the lines of like 100. It takes the hash code of the key and compresses it to determine which bucket each key hashes to. More specifically, 
where the dictionary, abstract data type that we were discussing above, that only the dictionary takes one step. So the basic dictionary ADT that we are thinking about takes one step. The hash table takes two steps to determine which bucket the value is stored the, the which bucket the value should be placed in. And so we have the following two ways. The fault here are the following two steps. So the first step is that it applies a key is passed into a function which maps it to an integer. Okay, and this could be any integer. This is called the hash code of the key, like we just talked about before. This is literally the same step as we were talking about in the dictionary abstract data type. However, the range is limitless. Then step two, and this is what makes it a hash table, it then takes this hash code and maps the hash code to another integer in the range uh, I'm just going to revert to shorthand here in the range of 0 to the length of the or of the array that you're trying to compress it into. At the very basic level, this is what's happening. And the way it, and the mechanism at which it does it is by using the modulo operator. Um, and I'll give an example of that later. So when we compress, then we are guaranteed that every key value pair can be inserted into the hash table. However, this gives us one problem, which I'm sure you're wondering this entire time. What happens when you have more than one key with the same bucket number? For example, if you start off with an array of two and you want to throw 10,000 key value pairs into this uh, hash table of size two, then obviously you, you, it's pretty evident that there are going to be more than, th there's going to be more than one entry per bucket. And this is called a collision and is something that good hash table design tries to minimize. However, sometimes, as in this case, it is not always possible. So we need to find a way to deal with collisions and, and also represent them without just losing data. And the way we do this is by, using, is by utilizing a different data structure and calling it chaining. So what is this uh, different implementation or different way of representing the hash table? So, so far, we've learned one data structure, which is the array, and then we learned about linked lists in the previous uh, couple, of couple of lectures. So what if we were to take a array of singly linked lists and use that to represent uh, instances where, uh, you have more, you, where you have ha uh, key value pairs that are hashing to the same bucket? So if you're confused, let me explain that and illustrate that to you right here. So let's take this following array. This is an array, or as many in Java would say it, this is an array of S lists. Okay? And let's just say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It has length 5. Okay? In z so let's say I insert my first key value pair and for some it undergoes some compression function and some hash code function and it hashes to the zeroth bucket and uh, so let's say I'll map k stands for key v stands for v uh, we'll call the key goo and the v 